There is a recent New York Times article that is raising an interesting question. Should a frozen embryo have the same rights as a child? The article cites the case of a divorced Missouri couple who are in court fighting over frozen embryos left over after the birth of their twins through in vitro fertilization. The ex-wife is appealing a ruling that says she cannot use the embryos without the consent of her former husband, but she says she sees it as having to fight to get my own children. So, interesting case. What do you make of it? I, I, I understand what she's saying, because the minute you become pregnant, you attach and be, you know, your the child, is, it, it, it's a child. The minute you become pregnant, and you've been pregnant, and you, the minute you find out Absolutely. it is yeah. a child. And I'm, I'm pro-choice, and I have, you know, uh, thoughts on that, but I can understand this woman it's an embryo. But what about he, his rights? And he has rights, but it's also, I can, there's a lot of legality with this, meaning if she has another child, is he gonna be responsible for that child? Is that child support? I understand the layers of what and he, he is saying. he doesn't want another child. But if she yeah. does, let her have a kid. No, I She's think moved you, on from them. If you have frozen embryos, and I don't know how many you know, she has, if the husband doesn't want to be involved and doesn't want to have another kid, then you shouldn't have another kid. But I they're don't divorced. Think Maybe they can sign something and say, this is my child then. If they're divorced and he wants nothing to do with the child and she wants another child, then let her have the child. But I think he's arguing that if she has the other child, every time he sees his twins, like he will like see that child, child yeah. and it is his child. I think you have so. to have mutual consent. I mean, I feel like you have to have mutual consent from the father and the yeah. mother to move forward with the embryos. I, I, they're e just but do you know that maybe it took a long time to get conceived? Say, but here's, I, she, think that oh, the, I think the simple fact that they had to go through this process probably means she probably yeah, could have children. Saying. So I think that's why it's so important for her to have those embryos, you know? Uh, he probably can go on and have other kids. I think he should just let her... And, and, and I get what's going on there, but sometimes things happen, you know? Does the embryo have any rights? Because there are those people arguing that this is not just a piece of property, this is something that is alive. And, it does, and you should be, think in terms of the best interest of the embryo, wow. equ equating it with a child. So many layers. So I'm just saying it's very, very complicated. Yeah, really yeah. complicated. I mean, there's, that's, I mean, there's, there's so many layers to this. And yes, you know, embryo, is it life? That's a whole, you know, abortion debate we get right. into also. But, you know, my sperm, I mean, it's alive. Does that mean that it's, you know, has rights also? So, I mean, there's so many different deep but layers But you know, the this. case with Sofia Vergara and her ex-boyfriend, that's still in the courts. At this point, I thought that there'd been some settlement, but there hasn't been. She didn't want him to have any rights to the embryos. Right. He wanted to actually, um, through a surrogate, have children mm -hmm. because he felt that that's my child too. And I don't think the courts have ruled on that yet. It's interesting. interesting. Yeah. So. Well, no matter consent. what, it's best before you get into a situation like that to think of all the things that could possibly happen because this has been coming up a lot. Moving on, if you've ever, do you, do you ever get the feeling that you're being judged during a doctor's visit? Ever feel like, like yes. they're looking at me or she's looking at me? Well, a new survey found that 40% of physicians reported having biases towards certain groups of people. They admit to this. 56% of male doctors said they stereotype patients based on their weight. Wow. 46% of female doctors said they did as well. 62% said they were biased towards patients with emotional problems. Wow. So they, they size you up right away. And if you're, you know, in the case of the, that percentage, uh, of doctors, if you're overweight, they're, they're not going to look at you the same. Right. You know, what do you, what do you think? You're I mean, I've had that a lot of times. No, no, I went to one doctor, before I even took my coat off, he said I had diabetes and a whole bunch of other things. <laughs> and then, I mean, it's true, they just look at you. I had, I had another doctor, he brought out a chart of where I needed to be in terms of weight. He was like, this is the average woman, and this is you up there holding a bag of fries. I mean, <laughs> you never know what's good. You know, they, they have so many judgments, and I'm pretty healthy, you know, yeah. I'm not... You know, someone that has a lot of conditions, I just happen to be overweight. So, you know, I think a lot of times when I go in, they instantly go to something that has related to my weight instead of really checking me out mm -hmm. to see what the problem is. Because not you, all overweight people are unhealthy. Right. 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 Do, you, do you ever... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you know, doctors are human beings, so they're going to have their opinions also. Right. But I think shaming someone is definitely not right. But to be concerned about your patient is another thing. But so do you ever lie you... to your doctor? Like when they say, no. how many drinks do you have a night? One. No! <laughs> I no? Do, I do yeah. take it down no. a couple. No. You say, you no. say on average, when they say it, like, yes. it's, they do, it's like a no. grid, like one to three. Three to four, five. I'm like, I I'm not ten to no. Stick in the one to three. Yeah. I checked the highest box. 
sucks because yeah. yes, well, it's true, but I mean, just, <laughs> it's the truth. But I get nervous that if I'm not full disclosure with him about what's going on with my body and what I am concerned about, then he can't give me an accurate diagnosis because he doesn't have all the facts. Yeah. And I'm terrified of having everything. Right. So if I give him a complete set of information, he can at least accurately diagnose me. No, I don't lie. My biggest not pet lying. peeve is when I whisper something to my doctor and then he comes back with somebody else and I'm like, what? Well, I just <laughs> only told you. Now everybody got to be well, that's involved. That's, 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 that's it. I have to say, I know that's there's, the HIPAA, there's HIPAA and stuff, but that whole office oh, knows yeah. what's going on yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. when so Meredith Vera walks in, like, oh, here comes it, Meredith Here Fair. comes the lush.